It was a tight squeeze to get into the Anchorage before dark. We were just about in the middle of the Florida Keys, at the popular and protected inner anchorage of Boot Key. An amazing aspect of traveling by boat is arriving in a place that I recognize from Hollywood movies that I watched over and over again in my childhood. I recognize this place straight away from True Lies, where Arnold is doing his best to stop a nuclear warhead from reaching the mainland via what I now know is the Seven Mile Bridge. Look at this miniature prop explosion. And just marvel at this excellent stunt actor work that took place at this fictionally historic spot that we were now at. It was New Year's Day, but bright and early, the fuel dock was already open. So it was time for us to get a $20 bill worth of diesel and fill up on fresh water. Yes. Time to keep heading north. We were starting to form a game plan here. We came to the US to pick up materials that we couldn't easily attain in Mexico, like quality bottom paint, engine parts, and more. We were also interested in hauling out, perhaps. This is nice, the Hobbs Channel. It's, it's not lumpy. It's about eight meters of water. We just have to dodge the traps. Dodge, dodge, you know, some shallower spots sometimes if we wish, and then also some lobster traps. That's the main theme here. Lobster and crab traps, yeah. They really want to cut in front of us. I thought the Mexican fishermen were bad. A nice big center consoles like to give you a scare and pass in front of you and I think the major reason is that everyone expects that everyone is fishing around here so I think that's the major difference here they love to pass in front and I guess it's done to make people comfortable about the fishing lines and the other situation is is that I've been itching to put a line in the water but I don't have a fishing license yet so so yeah so we have to get to Miami and have to find a place or do it online. I guess we have to get myself a fishing license. These guys, hey? He can't even see us. I don't think he saw us. He must have seen us. Nope. I don't think it, we're visible to him when his bow is up like that. He's sitting on the top. He can't see us. I just couldn't stop bitching about the non-stop crab traps. I'm in a navigable channel. I'm trying to stick close to the the navigation beacon, and I can't because it's full of crab traps. The raw water exhaust was not looking right. Very little water was coming out compared to what we usually see. We quickly sidled up as close as we could to where we wanted to land the dinghy. To check the impeller, right? We always know that's missing water. That's not much water coming out of this pipe. Hmm. Yeah, maybe a blocker because this, this should come up like really fast. Yeah. Yeah, it's just seawater level. We cleared the seawater strainer to find out where the blockage was. Maybe at the seacock too. I might have to open the seacock and. Yes, if we're lucky, it's it's not in the seacock itself, but rather just in the pipe. This should shoot up like 
this should be a jet of water coming up like, <laughs> like <laughs> yeah no the water line is here this is going to shoot up all the way to the water line okay so that's clear it was definitely somewhere within the raw water pipe Oof, maybe we should take the cl cramp clamps off there's a problem right there Ooh. all beautifully aligned <laughs> it's just been growing in there collecting but that that gets too small yeah too fast at the shitty reduction point to be exact access to land is easy here because there's basically nothing nearby no groceries no facilities only fishing at the local old bridge We tried to catch a glimpse of a sailboat going under the 65-foot middle portion of the bridge. The next day, heading towards Key Largo, the wind was much more in our face than appeared on the forecast. The wind just started coming in our face. Huh? The wind just started coming directly from the east. But we made it once more to a very clear and shallow anchorage. And once again, we found it difficult to find a place to land the dinghy where we could also find access to groceries and or facilities. So luckily, a friend of a friend of ours named Steve offered to come meet us and bring us to land. We were going to get a ride, but our ride also had the same problem as we have with our outboard. We lifted anchor and tried to go save our host. However, just as we arrived at his drifting vessel, his engine came back to life. We agreed to follow him closer to the entrance to the canal that leads up to his house and to re-anchor there. Approaching the canal, we encountered some very shallow spots. And his engine stopped again. The engine stopped again? Yeah, it's the water in his engine again. Somebody stopped finally to help him, otherwise, we would have had to go and get him. We could have way. rowed him. We could row him home. I'm not sure if they're going to successfully tow him. It looks like they've been having quite a conversation. Ah, he got him moving. Day out of water, how's it going? So what do you got? Fuel, water tanks, what do you need? Uh, well, at this point, uh, what we're mostly, the only thing we really need is to go and get some groceries. Yeah, come on, jump on. Okay. 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 Wait, sorry. <laughs> this neighborhood reminded me a lot of Puerto Aventuras, where we had our sailboat for several years in Mexico, but with more little bridges. Oh, there's a different profession that, 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 that's coming along for glassware. Bombs and pipes. Our new friend Steve is a neon artist. I was delighted by his works in the studio. Propane, we put the tubes in, you bend, mm -hmm. heat up and bend. Yeah. What do you bend them with? The by hand. Usually you can do it by hand. hand? Yes. You can all you, you wear some gloves and by hand and then you have these are the glass tubes. Yeah, these are the glass tubes. For gas? I think I think that's for, for, for filling the tubes with gas, yes. After some grocery shopping, Steve showed us how neon sign making works. Great for cooking your hot dog. Put in the stick and you just turn it in there. Yeah. Instant <laughs> hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. No. Sit. Sit. You've been for a long walk, Choco. Sit. Do you use one of these before? Yes, I've used I've done a bit of glass blowing in my life. Huh, that's interesting how close you can hold it. Yeah, no. That's one of the best isolators in the world. Keeps the pretty mobile. Steel or something would be for him. Oh yeah, yeah. copper and steel, you'd, you'd be gone in no time. Yeah, that'd be hot, hot, hot. Does it explode if it gets too hot? Never. It'll just melt and get really great. And if you're not wearing shoes and it falls right on your foot? Uh, yeah, it's really, really, really hard to learn. Super interesting. It's you just torch. you got to plug the end when you're doing tight bends, like on the ribbon or crossfire. Kings, just like pipe. Well, I'm not getting quite kink. Yeah. <laughs> you don't blow, it gets inconsistent, may maintain the diameter. So basically a quick could actually yeah. heat up. I thought you'd have to keep it much longer. Yeah, no, it gets good pretty quick. It took forever to heat up. Like heat resistant glass. So you can only get that tight bend by blowing into it. Well, yeah, get consistent diameter. Yeah. I went to art school for all my high school years oh, yeah? and then for university and I never encountered any glasswork. That's what's kind of a... I'm, too I'm, dangerous, too much liability now. <laughs> I, get, I think they were like, no, we're not going to give our art students access to flame. That's what... <laughs> yeah. Something like that. The lawyers put a kibosh on that. Huh? One end is closed off and this end is got a tube coming out. This is where you weld it up to here. Yeah, you get your little hand torch and you put it under vacuum. And this is your bomb barter. It's a big transformer down here. It's basically, you know, the same kind of on a power pole. Yep. It's just reverse. It's, they throw from high voltage to low voltage. What's the voltage like on those signs? They're high voltage with real low amperage. When it gets under vacuum, you run that high voltage and then the tube gets really, really hot, hot, hot. It's basically a cleaning process, 450 degrees, and you open up your vacuum pump there and it sucks everything out. You let it suck for 10 minutes and you seal the system off and squirt this little measured amount of gas in there. This is neon and that's argon. Oh, okay. There's stuff in there. <laughs> Not just air. Yeah. Oh. See, that's neon, which is red. This is a... It's argon. Argon blue. Shout out to Steve and his neighbors for their help. The next morning, we were off again on our journey to find boat gear and perhaps a boat yard. So within five minutes, three knots, chug, 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 to six knots, just from a little bit of wind turn. Yes, as I was saying, we go from sipping fuel, spurting oil, slow going to flying along. Huffing and puffing and kicking and screaming. <laughs> Huffing and puffing to flying along at five and a half knots in the right direction. So all we need is a little bit of wind. We know it's limited enough space. She likes her like wind, huh? She likes her wind. She likes her wind. I might have to close this window. Hey, that window's fine. It's very much that wind. The spray is coming from the opposite side, so. Seven He's probably sitting there laughing at us, being on his autopilot with his cup mug. He's like, oh, look at those losers sailing. Beyond Key Largo would be our first entry into the intercoastal waterway. From here, the journey would take place in even shallower water, but what worried us most was the possible shoaling at the opening. With wind and chop building slightly as we approached, 
We worried that the half meter of depth beneath our keel might not be enough to enter with the boat bouncing up and down. However, our fears were alleviated as the waves quieted down and the current sucked us into the mangrove-edged river. A ray just jumped. A little ray. Hmm. Like maybe a, an eagle ray? We'd come in at the right time, at a rising tide. It's not an accidental. There's one right in front of the so red. The kayak's ripping. You can actually slow down. We're like flying. You want me to reduce a bit? Yeah, you can reduce a bit. You put it on the stop and we're flying. Beautiful. We could see it opening up now on the other side. Somebody on Navionics got 2.7 meters on their chart plotter when they went through here. And going over that sounding, we are seeing 2.1 meters. But our depth sounder is half a meter down, so we are about 2.6. Yeah, so the same. Yeah. Woof, it's calm in here, huh? <laughs> and even though it's calm, we still seem to be moving. Smooth sailing. Towards a power plant. Towards a nuclear power plant? And I think we can already see Miami, like downtown, yeah, tall that buildings. Like downtown Miami. Now that we were through the narrow, winding mangrove passage, it was time to raise the forward sail again and to get back to some relaxed, quiet sailing. However, being in the ICW, we would need to become accustomed to passing through some narrow dugout channels, where if you go off course just a couple of meters, it's possible to immediately run aground. Stay between the red and the green. As Robbie had fun sailing down the runway, I began to prepare one of our fancy USA meals with some expensive potatoes. And then we arrived at yet another very shallow anchorage. Beautiful timing, bad idea. I'm getting eaten by the museums. Woo! Here, we lost Choco in the forest. Just as we were hoping to get back to the boat to escape the gnats and the mosquitoes, he went silent and didn't return to the dinghy when we called him. Robbie went into the tick-infested thicket and had to drag him away from an animal burrow. Oh, hey. Where are you? We were pretty angry, but also very happy that he was not eaten by a crocodile, a gator, or a snake. Thanks so much for watching. Join us next time as we reach the epic heights of the city of Miami. Mm -hmm.